L values, R values, GL values, PR values, X values help. Uh, so who knows what all of these value categories uh, mean? Okay, I, th I saw one hand. It's a bit dark, but I don't think it were. The, the, thing, the question you ought to be asking is, is you know, how far down this line do you get before you give up and, and, and have to look it up? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> like, the first one. <laughs> yeah, most people uh, don't know what all these are. But if, if I do like this, like, who has at least some idea what, what these mean, right? So it used to be simple. Uh, back in the good old days with like L values and R values. Um, before C++11, we only had two value categories. We had L values and we had R values. Um, and it basically meant an L value is anything that has an identity and an R value is anything that doesn't. So an L value is an expression that uh, is an actual object. It has a name, it's, it's like in there in memory, you can refer to it, others can like refer to this name. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and our value doesn't have an identity. Like the, you could still, there could still be some memory like there. It could be a temporary in, in yes. memory somewhere. But so this is uh, the, like the, uh, so far, what you think uh, are the good old days. So if you have a std string s here, then you do like this, like s, well, that has an identity. That's this thing here. So it has a name. Uh, you can like talk about this thing s. It has an identity. But this std string bar here, that doesn't have an identity. It's just like a temporary kind of thing. So you can't really name it. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't have an identity. And like these L values are so named because they typically appear on the left-hand side of the expression. So an L value and you have the R value here. Uh, because this wouldn't make, oh wait, that, that does make sense. You can actually put them in the other, uh, the other order. <laughs> so, so this is this is now an R value, but it's on the left hand side, and this is an L value on the right hand side. Uh, this doesn't really, it doesn't happen in practice a lot, but it's perfectly fine. Um, but like the L values typically are the things on the left hand side that you can assign to. R values are typically on the right hand side, and you don't typically assign. That uh, as of C plus plus seventeen at least, what it does is that. Actually, I'll get back to it after the talk. <laughs> but I, I'll, it's a, it has to do with temporary materialization and, okay. and uh, discarded value expressions. I can talk about it later. Um, uh, yes, but then um, C++11 uh, introduced move semantics. And uh, we want to be able to overload on uh, L value versus R value. So if we have a function S, F that takes a string, if we take an L value here, we, we don't want to move from this S here because like someone else could be using this, right? But this one, we really want to move from. We don't want to make a copy of a temporary. That's pointless, right? So if we want to be able to, um, to overload based on, based on this. So we have to be able to distinguish between these. Um, so then, well, if you have an L value, it has an identity. Someone else might be referring to it somewhere, so you can't really move from it. If you have an R value, doesn't have an identity, you can move from it just fine. But what happens if you try to uh, do std move here? And uh, this std move s, that still that uh, expression still uh, evaluates to actually the value uh, s, the object s. It's in memory; it has an identity. But you can still move from it. So you can't just say that well. Uh, if it has an identity, you can't move because you have to have some concept for this thing here that you, you're able to move from something that, that has identity. So what they figured out is that identity and movability are two orthogonal concerns. They're related, but they're not necessarily the same thing. So you can say uh, any expression, either it has an identity or it doesn't, and either you can't move from it or you can move from it. So, so far, we've seen the L value, it has an identity, and you can't, well, this was hard to move horizontally, you can't move from it. R values, they have no identity, they're temporaries basically, and you can move from them. Um, so then uh, we need a concept for this to move thing. So that's the X value. We need a name for something that you can move from even though it has an identity. So the S here, that's an L value. The, this one is still an R value like it uh, used to be, like very simple. And this std move is an X value. And the X uh, uh, stands for um, uh, expiring L value. 
So it is an L value, which is kind of no longer an, an L value. It, it has expired. You can't really use it any longer after you moved from it. So now we have a concept for that thing that actually it has identity, but you can actually move from it. Um, and like, if you are like a completionist, you might ask, like, hey, there's a square missing here. Should we have something here? Uh, and we should not, because there's nothing that you, there are, there's no really there's not an, uh, an no, nothing has no identity and can't be moved from. It's not a useful concept. <laughs> so yeah, there is there is nothing up here. Um, yeah. Just it yes. So they also renamed the, this concept of no identity uh, can move to PR value. So these are the three fundamental value types in C++ 11 and later. Uh, L value for the like normal, normal variables, PR value for the pure R values, that's the, the P here, the pure R value, which is like basically just a temporary, and an X value for anything that both has an identity and can be moved from. And I already said that there is nothing up uh, in the corner here. So where do we put GL value and the old name R value? Where do those go? Like, is there another axis here or what's going on? And I, uh, luckily, we have already discussed both of these. We just haven't given them names yet. Because GL value is basically just anything that has an identity. So it's like, if it has an identity, uh, you don't care if it can be moved from or not. It's just like anything that actually refers to a real object, that's a GL value. So both L values and X values, the union of these two is a GL value. So the S here is an, is an L value because it's just a regular object. And any L value is also a GL value. This is still a PR value like we saw on the previous slide. And then if you move from the L value, it's an X value. But it still has an identity, so it's also a GL value. And a GL value stands for generalized L value. And then, maybe no big surprise that we have like a union here in this direction as well. Anything you can move from is an R value. So um, you can see uh, this one is, hasn't changed, but here this, this string here, this PR value, that's just one type of R value. You can move from it. And if you stood move the S, uh, it's an X value, you can move from it, so it's an R value. So this is both an X value, a GL value, and an R value. And that's uh, the simplest way I can think of, of uh, yeah, discussing these five value categories in C++. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and you had a question about what happens yeah. So this is a PR value. And if you didn't do anything, like if, you, if you had assigned this to something, it would actually never exist. If you, if you assign this to something, um, then you would have a copy deletion, and nothing would, it would never actually exist. But since this sub-expression here is a discarded value expression, you, never, you discard this value, don't use it for anything, then you're forcing the compiler to do the uh, temporary materialization. I think that's the, that's the name. So it has to actually actually make the temporary. Like this doesn't have to even be a temporary. You can just do copy deletion and just like stick it right in here. Uh, at least conceptually. I'm not sure if it happens you can in. Just update the S object to contain bar without bothering to construct a string in the side. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if you have guaranteed copy deletion here, but you have that for like returning from functions. Like if I think a function call expression is an X value. Uh, so then, it's, so, so and then so then you get a temporary. And then you assign, then you copy assign into this temporary, and then everything just gets discarded. So it would be a way, in effect, of causing S to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just unsure of what the consequences of, of doing that would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, only the side effects, right? Nothing, nothing would come out of this anywhere. So it's just for the side effects. You would what have would the, side effect be? the constructor of this, of the string, the string oh. constructor, and then the copy assignments thing. And then, a destructive and then you then you destroy uh, this one uh, after you destroy it, or, or before you <coughs> destroy S. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea why they reuse the R value name for a different concept? Because I guess they could have called it like generalized R value. I think 
the number of places they would have to replace the word R value in the standard was a motivating factor. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Uh, but uh, not, not just like because of the work to actually go and like regex uh, the thing, but like all the documentation, everyone knows what an R value is. Like you can, and that's that's why they wanted to be able to like this concept of R value is apparently very similar to what it was before, whereas this concept of L value is not so similar. Something about that I think was the reason. Yeah. That S is, uh, is um, how to say, is an um, uh, assignable state, but not, uh, you shouldn't trust in the value that is holding. Is that any or any new whatever value? Because yeah. So the the question is when when you have when you have moved from S, you don't really know uh, uh, anything about it. So. Uh, um, Usually you can't just you can't do anything with but like this is just the value category is about the expression. It's not about the object. Mm -hmm. So this expression has a value category. The object itself doesn't really have a value category. It's just the expression. So the expression S here is an L value. Like S here doesn't that's just an object. But the expression S here, which happens to be S, it it's that's what has the value category. So the stud move doesn't change anything for S like that, but once you have moved from it. So std move doesn't actually move anything, but like once you actually call F and something has been moved from it, you can't make any assumptions about it. The state of this after a move is, yeah, don't assume anything. Yes, e except for the standard library, which says that uh, uh, any types in the standard library, unless otherwise specified, uh, if you move from it, it's in a valid but unspecified state. So that means you can still destroy it and you can still do these things uh, that the standard library kind of imposes on itself, but that the language, I'm pretty sure, doesn't ex impose on you. It has to be uh, probably, but I'm not sure if the. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure what the, what the, um, what actually the the standard like imposes on you. Yeah, but I'm not sure if the language it should probably do that, but like tell you as an implementer of the type, you have to satisfy that. It does that to the standard library. Um, so you can, but yeah, I'm not sure about the guarantees for like any other types. Yeah. Okay, thank you.